glad. We're going to be glad in this house. You know, it may not mean much to a lot of people. We got here this morning and Sharon walked in the sanctuary and there was two baby deer laying in the backyard of our church. Now, I've seen deer walking through the yard. I've seen deer running through the yard. I've seen deer standing, eating. But I've never seen deer just lay down on the ground in an in a un- open area like that, just laying there. And they laid there for a while. The only thing that hit me was complete, perfect peace. Because they were on the God's property. And they felt safe on, in the Lord's property. And now they're out there with their mama. I knew there was a mama somewhere, but I hadn't seen her all morning. So, no, Ken, she's off limits. <laughs> she's off limits. She's on, she's on holy ground. You can't touch that's a holy deer. <laughs> but, no, I, I, you know, you see things like that. And let me tell you something. I got a text last night from a pastor friend of mine who said, Pastor, I was praying today, praying over your church, and the only thing the Lord spoke to me for, for your church Sunday was there's going to be freedom. <laughs> he said, so I'm praying for addiction to be broken, for breakthrough to come. I'm praying that there's going to be more freedom than you've experienced in a long time in your church. I said, you know what? We, we, we receive it, we believe it, and we're going to live in it. Amen? Amen. So stand with me this morning. We're going to get ready to worship. Um, I'm excited today. Yesterday we have brown bag. We had a great, great day at Brown Bag. 300 lunches, you know, and it's not about how many. It's about who comes, and that's what we pray about. That's who we pray for. That's who we pray that will show up. That's who we, we pray, God, you send them, and he does. He does. Uh, yesterday wasn't as big a crowd as we normally have. We did have some stuff that Tim and Sharon actually took back to their place. To, yeah, it was very few, but... Uh, but listen, we, we would just say thank you for all those that gave financially, that gave uh, material-wise, but gave service-wise. Um, it, this is a ministry that takes everybody's effort. And without everybody doing their part, it would not be successful as it's been. We're going on three, three plus years doing this ministry, and every year it's getting better and better and better. And better. <laughs> so, yes, we give God praise and glory for that. We thank God for that. So, thank you for what you do to make Brown Bike what it is. So, this morning, we're going we're gonna, to, there's a brand new song. It's not brand new to, to the out there, it's going to be new to us in here. The song is called Rattle. If you've heard it on the radio, then you're going to know it. We're going to sing it this morning. Uh, just look at the words. If we have to, we'll sing it, and we'll get CJ to back it up, and we'll sing it the second time just for you to get it. But we're going to sing it. We're going to sing it with all of our heart. We're going to worship the Lord. Listen, listen. I was praying this morning. Worship is not about those words on that screen, okay? Worship is not about the sound that comes out of these speakers. Worship is about what comes out of you. You ready? Father, we thank you this morning to move in this house, to have your way in this place. Lord, we ask that you would just move in a powerful way. God, we ask that you would just have your way in this place. We've prayed this morning. We've already sealed for your anointing to be in this house. We've already accepted that you're going to be an atmosphere in this place that we breathe in. Satan, we bind and rebuke you in Jesus' name that whatever hindrance you have planned for this day, that it will not prosper. It will not come against what God wants to do in this house in this moment. And we surrender right now to you, Holy Spirit, to have your way in us, through us, and with us. Do as you see necessary, and we give you the praise. In Jesus, 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 mighty name we pray. And everybody said, let's worship, church. Come on, let's worship.
control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is a place where you promise to be. I'm not enough unless you come. We need me.
Church, the Lord is speaking to my heart this morning. He has been for a couple weeks now. And it's like the dry bones. I've been reading those passages. And he was talking to his people. He wasn't just, just talking to a, a valley of dry bones. He was talking to us where we get into a, a, a rut of spiritual dryness. And we think everything's good because we come to church, but there's still something. We're just doing the same thing day after day, but not getting our joy back. We're letting everything steal it. I'm telling you, the Lord is telling us today that there's some, we need some stirring. But we, we, I can't do your stirring. You got to do your stirring. You got to bring that, that dry bone feeling. Let the Lord touch you this morning because I'm telling you, He's here to speak to somebody. I don't know who it is. He's already spoken to me this whole weekend because we heard that rattle song like seven times yesterday. I mean, every time we got in the car, it was on. It was like, He was telling me, You need to shake up what you had because you're not where you used to be. You need to be back where you were. And I'm like, God, what am I doing wrong? He says, you're not doing anything wrong. You're just doing the same things over and over again and expecting a different result. And that is not what he wants. He wants us to do something new. So if it's screaming, ah, then scream. If it's crying, then cry. But do something. Don't just let it go by you because you're going to be sorry if you do. He's here to do something this morning. He's here to tell you. Stephanie's here to tell you what you're doing. He's got more for you. Stop just accepting what you have and go higher. Go higher. I'm telling you, he's here to do something. CJ, go back to that song. Go back to that song. We're not going to sing it. We're going to worship to it. If you need to come down here, get in this atmosphere of worship, you need to get here. If you do it where you are, do it where... I want you to get lost right now. I want you to get lost in him. Go back to those words, please. Go to those words. Look what that says. Look what those words say. I'm not enough unless you come. Go to the next line. Will you meet me here again? Next line. Because all I want is all you are. We're going to worship to this. We're not, I don't want, if you want to sing it, sing it. We're going to let them sing it. We're going to go back to the beginning. And I just want you to find a place and get lost in worship just for the, the, for the duration of this song. I want you just to get with him. I want him to do something in you, through you, and with you. And just let him take you back to that place. Come on, church. Let's worship. Come on. Go, guys. He's here to do something this morning. He's here to do something in somebody this morning or somebody's this morning. Come on. Don't, don't, let, the, don't let it be the mundane, same old, same old. Step into a new place this morning. Step into a new place this morning. Well, Pastor, I've always done this. Well, do something different today. Try something different today. Hallelujah. Unless you come. Come on, church. Show them this morning. Show them this morning. You mean it. Show them you mean it. Show them you mean it. Is all that you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Not what it was. Not what it used to be. What he wants it to be now. Where does he want you now? Where is he calling you to today? Where is he calling you to in this moment? Step in there. Step in that place. Oh, it's unfamiliar, Pastor. It doesn't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't recognize it. Yeah, you're not, you're not, because you've never been there. Huh. You've never been there. He's taking you there. Step in there. 
Step in there now. Step in there. It's not what you thought it was. Unless you come. Because all I want Come on, church. Let him meet you. Let him meet you. Yes. Yes, he is. He is here. He's in this place. here again Lord. will you meet us here will you meet us here you have already come you have already come thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord we give you praise come on church don't stop when the song stops don't stop Continue to worship. Continue to worship. Continue to worship. Just worship. He just wants your worship. He just desires your worship this morning. Yes, there's a message to preach if he wants it preached. But what he wants to do right now is what he wants. And that's all that we ask. That's all that we ask. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the message and the interpretation. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to this house. If you're on Facebook and you heard that, then it's for you. If you're in this room, receive it as a personal message to you this morning. Because he was speaking to his, to his children. Father, we just thank you for this atmosphere. Church, this is one of those moments that you don't really want to move out of. You feel like it, you, 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 it's just like, oh, well, we're just standing here. No, we're just fasting in his presence this morning. When God shows up like this, it, it can be a shout and dance and holler and run around the building, or it can be one of these moments right here where he's just actually just ministering and loving on his people. He's just loving on his people. And he's doing it through your adoration of worship. As you released yourself through your worship this morning, whether it was through your hands raised or your eyes closed, kneeling at this altar, laying in this floor, sitting, laying in his knee, wherever you are, how you did it, he's absorbing it. <laughs> and he's meeting us here. He's meeting us here. Father, we thank you this morning. What a sweet, sweet spirit has filled this room. It's one of those times as a pastor, you really just don't know which way to step next. You don't want to leave it. We don't want to quench it for sure. Never want to quench his spirit. Never want to quench his spirit. I will tell you this, he convicted me this morning, really sharply. As we were getting ready for church, we were standing here, and there was a countdown was going on. It was getting less than a minute. This room was pretty bare. And I leaned over to my wife, and I'm like, I don't get it. Where's everybody at? And the Holy Spirit checked me and said, do you need everybody to worship me? Or you need just me? So I'm no longer concerned about who's in this building. Let me say that differently. I am concerned, but it's not going to stop my worship. It's not going to stop my seeking him. It's not going to stop me going after him. I want this place full, and I still believe. Let me tell you something. I, you know, God, God sometimes does things to me that I think it's just the silliest things. I'm coming down the road the other day, and, and, and there was people, several cars behind me, and, and I always get in those little stripe lines right there. You're not supposed to get in those. They're not for turning lane. But I get in there to turn into the building because I don't want to slow them people down and just turn from the other lane. So I pulled. I said, why didn't, the, why didn't they just put us an arrow to turn into our church right there when they done this. And I just sit there and I just felt something rise up in me. I said, that's okay. One day they'll have to direct traffic because there's going to be too many cars coming in and out. They'll have to put a turning lane in. We'll show them, won't we? No, he will, not us. What an what a atmosphere, church. What a, what a presence in this place. What a presence in this place. I believe this atmosphere is a good time for prayer. I, I, if you can't get touched in this, then we need to start with salvation first. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, the Lord is in this building. Um, I, I shared this Wednesday night, but my niece over in Birmingham, I, I did find out some things this morning. They, they actually did shave her head because of the mercer that she has. But... As of Wednesday, the doctors were in her room. This girl has had like six straight days or so many days of chemo. I mean straight. And, and, and <clears throat> uh, just, you know, just, just her body's just, you know, it gets weak. Anybody that's had it knows what it is. The doctors came in and looked at her. Now, this was as of Wednesday. And they said, we don't understand You've not lost one strain of hair. Amen. Amen. 
Now, it's gone now because they had to because of the other issues. Also, the nurses came in her room, and they walked in. They said, Susan, we like to come in here because there's more peace in this room than on the entire floor of this hospital. Let me tell you something. When, when, you, when you are a child of God and you are trusting God with your own, even with your life, there's a peace that comes over you that first surpasses all understanding. And I just, we just want to praise God for what he's doing. Um, and, and, you know, there's still a, still, still a long way to go. But God's still on the throne. And until he decides what's going to be best for her, we're going to keep trusting him with her. Okay? Come on, Steve. Woo. Do what you can. Yeah. My heart is full this morning. It is overwhelmed with joy this morning. The Lord reminded me this morning to remind him. His word says to keep him in remembrance of his word. That's like telling a poet, remember that poem you wrote? You remember the words in that poem you wrote? I believe in that. I'm standing on those words. As we remind God of his word, we need to have those words within our heart and our mind and our soul because we need to stand on those words. I thought of that as, as, as I don't want to say prostrate, but I, just, I was just seeking God for something this morning. He has given me a peace beyond all understanding. God, so much going on, and it's just like, it's just like, it's just peace. When I'm used to this, it's just, it's just peace. And I give God praise for it. What is your God? If you need a new heart, he can do that. If you need a deliverance, he can do that. If you need a healing, he can do that. My wife said this morning on the way to church, I'm tired of taking pain pills. I just want to be healed. I don't want to have pain anymore. I said, if he does that to you, you'll be content right here on earth, and that's not what he wants. I'm not saying God doesn't want to heal you, but I'm saying that he can use what you're going through. Oh, yeah. yes, he this is a testimony. Everybody's got to have a testimony. If you don't have a testimony, you're probably not going to wind up before the Lord and living with him for eternity. So I'm going to ask you this morning, not just for yourself, but for anybody that you know that has a need, I want you to come and stand in for them. But I want to tell you before you come up here, when you stand in for them, and God reminded me of this, I learned this many, many years ago. If you come up here and you stand in for them and you receive prayer for them, you either have to call them today, go to their house, and let them know, God had me stand in for you today. He had me pray and be specific what he had you pray, and you're going to have to pray with them. Now, if they live in California, obviously you can't go to their house, but you can pick up the phone. Don't text. Don't email. This is personal. So I'm going to ask you this morning, if you have a personal need, that's, we, need we need to pray with you. But if you know somebody that has one, and I do, God's already, he's already convicted me for it. I'll be picking up the phone this afternoon, and it's going to be tough because it ain't something I want to do. But he has burdened my heart for it. And I'm going to be obedient this day. I don't know what the outcome is going to be, but he does. So I'm saying today, just trust him. If you can't trust him, there ain't nothing else on this earth that you can trust. So I'm just asking you to trust him. Won't you come up?
I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave oh, just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do I just want to where we start Coming back to where we start When I first felt your love You're all that matters, Jesus You're all that matters Coming back to what really matters Just your heart just want to bless your heart, Jesus. I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this hole. Never want to leave. And oh, I'm not here for blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. And more than anything. just
make his face shine upon and be gracious to me. The Lord turn his face toward me and give me peace. The Lord bless you. His face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Some of you in this room need to understand something. Or maybe you need to hear something. Some of you, hmm. <laughs> some of you are in unfamiliar territory. Listen, we've all been in unfamiliar territory the last year. We've all been in unfamiliar waters. We've all been in surroundings that have just not been the same. Everything's been different. But some of you are in places in your life not because of a pandemic, not because of a government shutdown, not because of a financial crisis. Some of you are in unfamiliar places. It's because God's about to take you somewhere you've never been. Hear me now. I am very uncomfortable right now saying what I'm saying. God's about to take somebody, some people, some people, some, some of you to a place that you've never been. Listen, I believe, church, I, maybe this is prophetic, maybe it's not. I don't know. I just feel in my spirit right now 
to relate to you that God is about to do some things that his children have never seen. Listen, I tell you, God said, the Bible says I'm going to do a new thing. I know we sit there and think, well, pastor, I've seen it all. You ain't seen it all. And whatever God does ain't new to him. It might be new to you. I just believe God's about to do something in these days that we're in that we have not seen before. And I believe some of you, he's preparing to take you to that place. To use you into things that you've never seen or done. I, 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 I want us to understand. I, I know the enemy is at work, okay? I know that he's the roaring lion seeking. I, I understand He's out there. I understand he's creating all this conflict. He's, create, he's creating division and deception. I get it. But my God can't fail. And anything that Satan tries to come against him with will not prosper. So whatever Satan has on his agenda, God's about to put it to shame. He's going to come. He's going to do what he set out to do. We just finished chapter 20 or 21 of Revelation. We're going to get into the last chapter this Wednesday night. And I'm telling you, we had a good time last Wednesday, some great time talking about a new heaven, a new earth, a new city coming down called New Jerusalem. We, we talked about the inhabitants of that place. We talked about, uh, I'm still thinking, I'm still dwelling on the, on the marriage supper. I'm still thinking about all that food. But <laughs> I'm telling you, we talked about some great things, and, I, and I, I understand Satan has to do what he set out to do. If not, then this book is a lie. But it also says what God's going to do. <laughs> and in case you haven't read the end of the book, church, we win. Yeah. We win. Because we serve a God who's never lost, who's never failed. Amen. I just had my wife, and this is for whoever wants it. I, you know, I grew up in Pentecost when people wasn't ashamed of it. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. I grew up in Pentecost when people wasn't ashamed of it. Amen. I grew up at a time where they would lay hands on you and pray and pray over you, cast out devils, pray over you and, and, until neither one of you can stand anymore. And I also remember seeing pastors and evangelists come through, and I remember them taking a piece of cloth and anointing it and giving it to people. I'm going to tell you, we're going to anoint these. We're going to have some prayer cloths up here. And if you need to take... Oh, pastor, that's old-fashioned. It worked for Paul, it'll work for us. Amen. Paul took his apron and cut it up, and they prayed over it, and the people took it with them, and miracles took place, church. Miracles. So, don't tell me it's old-fashioned. My question is this, what happened to Pentecost in the day? Nothing happened, the people changed. I'm Pentecostal and I'm not ashamed. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not ashamed. I speak in other tongues. I'm not ashamed. I walk with anointing. I'm not ashamed. It's about time we don't care what they think. They. Yeah, you got to watch out for they. They said. They said. They'll, yeah, watch out for the days and the dims. Don't hang around no folks. Listen, can I share what you told me, June, yesterday about your friend? She had a stroke. Her speech was bad. The nurses went in to talk to her, and all she could do was speak in tongues. Yeah. 
See, y'all, that may be all. Well, yeah. To me, that gets my blood boiling. It makes me happy. I mean, somebody's going to get touched by that woman just because God used her in a time that nobody else thought she could be used. I don't care where you are. If God's ready to do something in you, let him do it. Where are we at? What are we supposed to do? Oh, we got to have prayer. Come on, kids. We're going to pray for the kids as we pray for everything else. We got some kids today, Robin. Woohoo! There he is. He had a dinosaur yesterday that bit my finger off, didn't it? Yeah, we, it grew back, but ooh, I didn't know. He actually let the dinosaur burp, and I got my finger back. I'm sorry. I'm going to annoy, I'm going to appoint Tanner as our security guard. Okay? He's fine, June. He's fine. He's stumping on the devil. I'll stump on him, too. Good job. Oh, we got a, we got a little one up here today. I was going to, was going to introduce them, but we do have a new member with us today. Aniston. I know you call her Annie G, right? Annie, just Annie. Aniston Grace, right? She is a month, almost a month old. And she's still like a little baby doll. She's a new addition to our family. Amen. Our family and the church family. So she'll be available for photos for $10 a piece after church. <laughs> um, would y'all pray with us? Father, thank you for these precious, precious children. From the youngest to the oldest. Lord, they're all precious in your sight. And God, I pray you, it, it, Lord, it, an age doesn't matter, a factor in of your service to them, of your power and your anointing on them. God, you could speak and use them in ways that you can't even use us. Now, Father, I pray for them today. I pray for their families, their homes. God, that you will bless, you will pour out your spirit. God, you will be with them, guide them, lead them through this, the rest of this summer. And, Lord, I just pray over a favor over their, over their surroundings, a hedge around them, God, for protection. Now, Father, we pray every week for our military and our firefighters, our first responders, for their families. And we combine that prayer this morning for our children. Lord, and we pray for our military and, and the men and women and their families. Lord, we pray for our government, our leaders, national to local, Lord, across this land. And, Father, we ask that you do a mighty work. And, Lord, we thank you for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you all this morning. He got me sighted jumping, up on, jumping on the devil, man. I, I like that. Children can go with Robin. Um, no, Tanner, you're not going. Who, Tanner? Uh, yeah, he, when we got here, y'all, he, he literally, he was this tall. He wasn't that tall. I don't know what Marsha feeds them over there, but I need to go eat some of it because he's, he's not just... He's tall and, and, man, I just go this way, not this way. What is it? Oh, we got tithes and offerings. How can I forget tithes and offerings? Come on, ushers, would you come? We've had a great spirit here. I, I want to show you something physically. I want to show you something. And, and I'm not here to to cause any, any commotion or any, any disruption. I just want to show you something, what the Holy Spirit showed me. Too many times in our giving, we, we restrict things. Because listen, I'm going to tell you, I just want to show you, God cannot bless this. He blesses this. When you let it go is when he blesses it. It's not about what or, or, or who. It's a matter of your heart and the condition of your giving. We are thankful and blessed by this church of the giving that comes through this church. Through tithely, through tithes and offerings here, through people mailing it, people dropping it by, ever how it's done. You don't understand how grateful we are. As the, as the board and myself, we're so thankful for your faithfulness in giving. 
And I know, I know, I know that God will bless you in return. Amen. Amen. Let's stand. Put it on the screen. This is my tithe that will do what God says it will do. The windows of heaven open over me and my house. Abundance of blessings will be released so I won't have adequate room to contain them all. I am to feel joy, laughter, and many testimonies what God has done. I am the seed of Abraham, and the oath God swore to him as my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithe and offerings into this storehouse, new life, assembly of God, so that we may be a house of rescue. Father, as we pray every week, we thank you for the gift. We ask you to bless the giver. But Lord, we, we thank you for what is sown into this soil of this church. And Father, it's not giving to this church, it's giving through this church into your kingdom. And Father, I pray as I do every week, we're thankful. But Lord, help us be good stewards with what is sown in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you bring your tithes and offerings, please? building in the overflow we're going to pray for every one of you that desire prayer tonight the same anointing in here is flowing into that room right now let's just begin to worship him now just for a few moments let's entertain his presence let's worship him right now just give him glory close your eyes and lift your hands tell him in your own way how much you love him tell him in your own way what he means to you we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Precious Jesus. Come on, before I preach, just stand and let's sing this. Come on. He's so worthy, church. I sing praises to your name. Sing it with me. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Praises to your name. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and great to be praised. I sing praises to your name. Oh Lord. There's no other name like your name. I love your name. Oh Lord. For your name is so great and worthy to lift those hands and sing it again right now, everybody. Praise us to your name. Hallelujah. sing praises to your name. Praises to your name.
Oh, Lord. Praise it. I want you to give him your best praise as you're seated this morning. Give him your best as you're seated this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I keep forgetting she's here and they're going to scare the life out of her. I'm about to put y'all on the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Put y'all on the front row. Now you can't never say you didn't sit on the front row in church. Well, let's, sit, let's do this. I'm not doing it because of COVID. I'm just doing it. Miss Jean, come pick a seat. Yes. Be careful which one you sit in, though. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's not, it's not movie, sir. It's not trap. Just sit down. Yeah, have a seat. You all right? You're going to be there the whole service. The whole sermon. But just sit tight and look pretty. Thanks, you look pretty, y'all. Ain't that good? Come here, Tanner. Ha, <laughs> ha. Perfect. Glad you're in the building today. You didn't know you were going to be used today. Find another, find, pick a seat. Huh? Well, this is the one that's got the prize under it, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll be just kidding. Billy, sit down. Now, bow your heads, we're done, let's go home. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to get to them. Before we do, I'm going to read a passage of Scripture this morning that's very familiar. It's a parable that Jesus taught. It's very familiar, and it's been taught probably in a lot of different angles, a lot of different ways, a lot of different approaches. Uh, I, I've heard it taught from different perspectives, different angles. The thing about the parables or any, anything about preaching is that <laughs> you can have five preachers with the same text and preach five different sermons because it's the Holy Spirit who gives the, the word that needs to be out. And this word today is for the entire body of Christ. It's for this church and it's for any believer. It applies to any believer. And, and uh, these, these three are going to be part of the illustration that I want to show you on what happens because I believe we've come to a place and I feel the Holy Spirit has spoke this to me we've come to a place where our witness is not what it should be because we're not doing what we should be if you'll stand with me for the reading word turn to Matthew chapter 13 y'all yeah y'all can stand up Matthew 13 beginning at verse 1 
Everybody there? Say, I'm there. I'm there. Okay, everybody's not there. Everybody didn't say it. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Great crowds assembled around him so that he went into a boat and sat there. And the whole assembly stood on the shore. And, he, and he, then he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. While he sowed, some seeds fell to the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground and where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they did not have deep soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they did not take root, they withered away. Some seeds fell among the thorns, and the, and the thorns grew, and it choked them out, or choked them. But other seeds fell on into good ground and produced grain a hundred, sixty, and thirty times as much. Whoever has ears, let him hear. Jump over to verse 18. It said, therefore, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom of, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away, what was sown in their heart. This is the one who received seed by the path. But he who received the seed on rocky ground is he who hears the word and immediately receives, receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises, listen to this, because of the word. Y'all read that? He has no root in himself, but endures for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, you will be tried because of the word of God Amen. and tested. Uh, where am I at? 22, and eventually he falls away. And the 22, he also who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit. Some produce 160 or 30 times what was sown. Father, speak to us today clearly through your word. Let your Holy Spirit be the preacher today. I hide behind his words. I hide behind his anointing. Let the anointing of your words flow today and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. This passage of Scripture is very familiar with all of us that have ever read the parables of Jesus and read the book of Matthew, and you can find it in the rest of the Gospels as well. But I like the way Jesus does this. In the first part of this, he gives the parable. Then he explains the parable. I've heard this preached on, on the, the actual grounds uh, of the different types of ground, which is the different hearts of people, the different places where people are in their life and how the seed does certain things in certain places. But today I want to talk to you about a different approach. I actually want to look at two things in this passage. I want to look at the seed. I want to look at the sower. I am not a farmer. I am not anybody. I have grown plants, but they were illegal plants. But <laughs> uh, I know it's on Facebook. I'm sorry. But I, I can't grow anything. I cannot grow. I'm not a farmer. But I do know the process of things. I do know that there's some men in this room on the back row back there on this side that have gardens. They understand what it means. They get it. You gotta, I know you got to work the ground. You got to till it. You got to get it. You got to cultivate the ground. You got to get the ground ready to receive the seed. Y'all should be running around this church. I said, you got to get the ground ready to receive the seed. You ain't going to go out there and throw it on no hillside and say, well, now, now June can throw seeds in a rock place and grow a flower. I don't know about anybody else, but that was on Facebook. I, I, I'm kind of glad she shared that because it worked perfect this morning. But listen, there are different souls, different hearts, different places people are that receive the word of God. But I want you to know this morning in this building, everyone in this room is a sower. You're either going to sow one of two things in your life. You're going to sow seed or you're going to sow water. Hmm? What? Watch me. Stay with me. Just, we're, we're, on, we're, on this, we're in this together. Just, just buckle up and hang on for the ride. It's going to get fun. Jesus is referring to a literal person sowing seed. 
how it falls as he's walking and it falls and you know, and we know we 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 well, you understand we get what he's talking about. But today, I want you to understand something. And here's what I believe, here's what I know the Holy Spirit has spoke to my heart. Today, there's a lot of people in the church, especially through all the things we've been through the last year and struggling through part of pulling through this year as well. Um, a lot of people have come to the point where they don't sow like they used to because they don't get instant gratification. You see, let me tell you something. The harvest of what we sow has nothing to do with us. It's not even for us. I know, I know the Bible says, you know, do not weary for doing good for in due season you'll reap a harvest. The harvest that is reaped is never for our benefit. It's for his kingdom. We're not sowing so we can reap. We're sowing so he reaps. I understand we do get blessed out of it. I do understand we get blessed out of it. But I'm telling you, it, it, and I'm not talking about a seed this morning of, 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 of a faith seed. You know, we used to do things in church called a faith promise. We'd pass out pieces of paper. Church is trying to raise money. We're trying to do something. I don't know what we're going to do. Well, uh, we pass out a faith promise, and we tell people, you take one of these pieces of paper, you pray about it, and as God enables you, you pledge to give this much over the course of the year. That's a faith promise. We have seed faith where people sow seeds into, into, king, into, into uh, good soil, ministry seed. Let me tell you something. When you sow a seed into this church or you sow a financial seed, I want you to hear me now. That seed has to die before it can produce. If you plant a seed in your yard of any sort, that seed must die before it can produce. You follow me? That, no, there's no seed that will ever be planted unless it dies. If you keep it in your hand and walk around with it, holding it, that seed will never do what it's supposed to do. It'll never serve its purpose. When you plant it, and it gets what it's supposed to have, the nutrition and the nutrients from the ground and everything is supposed to be done. The ground is right. Everything's ready. When you get it and that seed is there, over the time it takes for it to happen, it dies. And when as it dies, it starts to sprout. And it, it, listen, it sprouts two ways, roots and, and whatever it's pr producing. We're not sowing a seed this morning that works like that. The seed we're sowing, and Jesus explains that the seed that he's talking about is the Word of God. The seed that we sow doesn't die when it hits a life. It actually brings a life to life. Everything dead in the life when you sow the Word of God brings that, life, brings that back to life. This is the only seed that doesn't have to die. It actually lives when it's sown. We, as his people, as his followers, as his disciples, as his children, are called to sow seed. Amen. What are these for? Well, this is Miss Jean. Y'all know Miss Jean? Well, Miss Jean encounters this young man. And she tells this young man about Jesus. She shares her story. She shares some scripture. She tells him about how he's touched her life and changed her life. Well, this young man, he hears what she says, but he just kind of walks away. You just planted a seed. You just planted a seed. The problem we have is because we didn't get instant gratification. We don't longer want to sow more seed. Just because you sow it, honey, doesn't mean they're going to receive it every time. But down the road, this same young man comes up and encounters Billy. And Billy just so happens he don't know who Gene is. He don't know what happened to this young man. And Billy shares the same Jesus from a different angle. He doesn't know what this young man's life about, 
But let me tell you what happens. I'm talking about the heart being cultivated. Here's what happens. When Billy shares this same Jesus, this young man or young girl, whoever it is, all of a sudden thinks about what Gene said. He goes back to when it was first planted. He goes back to that first encounter. He said, wait a minute. There was a lady. What was that lady's name? Man, there was a lady. He might even tell this to Bill. Man, there was a lady that, that told me the same a story about the same Jesus. There must be something to this. What just happened is whatever seed was sown just got watered. The time of your life when you're out being a witness for Christ, when you're out sowing seed, you don't know if you're planting seed or if you're watering something that's already been planted. I'm going to tell you something. I had a call on my life at 14 years old, but at 16 years old, I was a drug dealer and a drug addict. But there was a seed planted in me that just would not die. And it kept telling me over and over and over. And I kept hearing this young, this, this girl kept chasing me through high school. <laughs> Jesus loves you. <sighs> Jesus loves you. Would you please stop? I know it. I would look at her and say, I know, I know. She'd walk up, I know, I know. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. She'd still say it. I went to the lunchroom one day on the back side of the school. Nobody goes into the lunchroom. But who's sitting in the lunchroom? Jesus loves you sitting there. <laughs> and she made sure I knew it. That seed, every time she said it, had more water put on it. It had more water put on it. Well, it took about 16 years, but eventually... <laughs> It brought life to a dead young man. It may take time, but as the heart cultivates and as that seed is planted, it goes back to that time when, that, when, it, when they experienced when that first encounter. And the next thing you know, there's this young teenage boy encountering this, this, this young man or young woman. And he says, hey, you know, I'm, my name's Tanner. He said, can I tell you about a man named Jesus? Wait a minute. Hold on. They go back to the first time. Then they encounter this second time. They said, wait a minute. I have, I've had two people now talk to me about this man named Jesus. Now here you are telling me about Jesus again. I need to know more. And when they say the word more, you just got them. Yeah. Why? Because now that seed that was planted has been watered maybe more than once. Maybe more, maybe more than twice. They've, every time somebody speaks, they encounter that first encounter, the second encounter, maybe the third, the fourth, or whatever. But now finally they've come to a place where their heart has been cultivated. The gr ground is fertile. The ground is ready. You're not going to go up to somebody on the street that you don't even know that hasn't even been prepared and plant a seed and expect it to do any work. Let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit will lead you to who to talk to. If, it, if the Holy Spirit tells you, go speak to Austin, you better go do it. Because let me tell you, not only has he talked to you, he's already talked to him. He's already prepared his heart for what you're going to say. Well, oh, Pastor, I just can't. Listen, I randomly tell people about Jesus. I just mention his name. Most of them, yeah, I know. I can't hit them over the head with a book. Sometimes I want to. I just have to keep sharing it. I just have to keep watering it. I don't know where my position is, but what happens over here is finally this young man, young woman, says, you know what? Would you tell me more about this man? Now harvest has come. But here's the thing. The seed may start here, and the harvest may end up here. 
The water may be here. The, the, the seed may start here. The water may be here. The harvest may be here. You don't know where your place is in line when you're out there sowing seed. It may not just be sowing seed. It may be watering a seed that's already been planted. The problem we've come to is that we've gotten so So to the point where if, 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 if he sows a seed and they don't receive it right then, I ain't going to talk to the next person. See where we here? This is where we got. Listen, the, the pandemic and, and the political things that are going on right now, the, the surroundings that's taking place, the, the government, the, the economical stuff, the financial thing, everything that's, that's developing and going on has got the church to a point where, listen, if I tell you about Jesus, you don't receive it, you, you just, then it's on you. No, it's still on you. We are the sower. We are the ones that go plant. We're the ones that go out and put the seed. We're the ones that go out and water. Listen, if, if there was nobody planting seed, none of us would be sitting in this room this morning. If nobody cared about watering what's already, we don't, the point is we don't know what our part is in the process. God is cultivating the heart. God is getting the heart prepared and getting the heart ready. I understand the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. But I want us to understand we can't just quit and throw on the towel because they don't receive right then. we got to understand. Listen, some said I'm going to follow Apollos. Some said I'm going to follow Paul. I'm going to follow this guy. Listen, Paul said some water, some plant, but God gives the increase. It's not, it's not for my place to just to be the one. God, Steve, why does he always do this to me? We've got too many Christians that only want to be part of the harvest. Look how many I led to Jesus. Whoopty, whoopty. He ain't going to ask you when you get there how many you led. He's going to say, well done, or either depart, one of the two. He ain't going to look at your status sheet and see how many you struck out on or how many you hit home runs on. He ain't going to look at your, 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 your sheet and say, well, you know, you missed this one, you got this one. Oh, you were way off on this one. Well, he's going to look and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Why? Listen, uh, there was... I know this guy kind of fell from the, from the thing named Ray Bolts. And if you know Ray Bolts, you know his story. Uh, you know, the man, man had a phenomenal voice, had said some powerful songs, but he sung a song called Thank You. And there's going to be people in heaven that's going to come up and say, Thank you for sowing that seed. Thank you for putting water on that seed. It's not the accolades that, that we're going to get here. Listen, there may be a seed you've sown in somebody's life that you may not ever meet till you get to heaven. There might be a water that you, uh, somebody, you, a seed you watered. You might not even know about it till you get to heaven. We got to quit worrying about harvest time. We got to quit worrying about we going to be the harvest. We want to be part of the harvest. Listen. I'm ready for the harvest, the harvest for the kingdom, not for New Life Assembly. When New Life Assembly grows, the kingdom grows. And if the kingdom don't grow first, I don't care if we ever grow. Oh, pastor, that's, no. Listen, I'm not sowing seed to get accolades from some people or some news article or some news or some catalog or some magazine. I don't sow seed so somebody can walk up and say, hey, pastor, there you go. I don't need that. I don't need the bats. I don't need attaboys. What I need is a father to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. I understand we give credit where credit's due. We give honor where honor's due. I understand people need to be encouraged. People need to be, you know, we give a plaque out every year to somebody for excellent service. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We acknowledge the fact somebody went above and beyond what was, in, what was required. 
<laughs> we have a saying around our church. You're going to hear about it again, some of the leaders at, at in our leadership meeting after church today. We want to do things with excellence. We want to do things with excellence. Jesus did everything he did, he did with excellence, even the cross. It was done with excellence. We are sowers. That parable is a great parable about the hearts of people and the condition of people. But listen, it doesn't mean because the seed falls to the wayside, the seed falls to rocky ground, the seed falls to thorns and thistles, the seed falls to what? And listen, it doesn't matter where it falls. We plant it. God has to do the cultivating because somebody's going to come along behind it and speak into it again. And once it's spoken into, then it's cultivated and the, 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 the ground is fertile and ready to receive what God's about to do. Amen. Salvation does not just come randomly. The Bible says this. Whosoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can I look at you and tell you this morning, I'm a whosoever. Yeah. I found a t-shirt on Facebook. I'm going to order it. It says, I'm a whosoever, John 3, 16. I'm a whosoever. Because whoever, whosoever call, it doesn't matter red, yellow, black, or white. They are precious in his sight. It doesn't matter your status. It doesn't matter your, your job. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter how bad you've been or how good you've been. If you call upon Jesus, you will be saved. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter their platform. It doesn't matter their, who they're, what group they're leading, what protest they're leading, or, or what organization they're leading. It doesn't matter. If, I don't care if it was Hitler himself. If he'd have repented with a pure heart, he'd have been saved, church. Because, listen, it's people that need to have seed sown in their life. I told you earlier, if we take the word of God and hold it, it's no effect. The word of God's not meant just for our own doing. It's meant to share. It's meant to sow. It's meant to distribute. It's meant to give out. It's meant to tell people. This word was not written as just a person. It's a personal thing to you. That it changes your heart, but as it changes your heart, it's meant to change the heart of others. Amen. Listen, we are agents for God. We are, the, we are the source. You heard me tell this story when Jesus went back to heaven, and it's just a, it's just a paraphrase. He went back to heaven. To the, all the people in heaven was, hey, man, what was it like on earth? What were those people like? It's just paraphrasing. Yeah, well, you know, well, you know, well, yeah. and I had these disciples, you know. What about the church? Well, you know, it's up to the disciples. What if they fail? And Jesus says they can't. There's no plan B. Do you know the church now is up to us? The disciples are gone. They've, they've, they're waiting. <laughs> they're part of that Hebrew group that's waiting for us to finish what they started. We are the last oak for the world. And if we're not going to sow seed about the word, then I promise you Satan will sow seed of corruption. If we don't sow seed of hope, I promise you Satan will sow seed of evil. Just as God has the word, Satan as a counterfeit. When God's word is truth, his word is false. When God's word is truth and alive, his word is alive and dead. And it's amazing to me, it's, it's, it's mesmerizing to me that, to, that so many people will neglect this and believe a lie. I can't any longer worry about that it used to really bother me and it still does in a way but I can't no longer let that consume me I have to be busy sowing seed 
The thing about these people, I wanted them up here, is because I want you to actually see that it doesn't matter age, color, or whatever. What it takes is a heart that says, God, here I am, use me. Here I am, use me. There's a world, church, around us. There's, there's a society around us. There's a culture around us that's changing every moment. It's changing every, every, every moment. We, there, there's things now that, I've see, that I see that I never would have dreamed of seeing in America. There's platforms being built that I would have never thought I would ever have to encounter it. And what, here's what it does to me. It doesn't really bother me now. It terrifies me about my grandchildren. Amen. That little precious thing right there, if the Lord tarries. I said, if the Lord tarries, what's her world going to look like? See what I'm saying? The word of God has to go forth, church, and we are the source that it goes through. We are, the, we are the hope that somebody has on the street. We are the hope yesterday of giving somebody a sandwich that was hungry, but it was more than a sandwich because we don't give them Jesus, they still walk away hungry. Right. We've made it a point that we share Christ with people. We let people know this is about Jesus. We pray for you. Listen, there was two, uh, two ladies that Jean was talking to that called me to her car. We need to pray for Brandon and A. That's his nickname is A. They both were young men, have diabetes, and they're both really sick. We prayed in her car yesterday, and, we, and I told her we'd pray in church today. I'd have our church praying. <clears throat> people, listen, people are looking for answers. I know they may be sitting back there. Oh, my God. I'm about to get in serious trouble. Let me get this last sip of water so I'm going to die. They might have blue hair. I'm going to get over here with the young folks because I may get hurt in a minute. You got my back? You, you don't count. <laughs> they might have blue hair. They may be tattooed from here to here, but if their heart's for Jesus, I don't care what their outside looks like. We got too many people want to sit back and say, they don't look like me. Well, praise God they don't act like you either. Amen. Church, we have a seed to sow. The seed is the word of God. If this word doesn't get out to everybody that we possibly get it out to, Satan's going to create havoc in their life and destroy them right where they are. We're sowers of the word. We have a responsibility. He called us to the cross. He saved us. He empowered us. He filled us with his spirit. He gave us the gifts of the spirit. He gave us the fruit of the spirit. And he tells us to operate in the fruit. And he tells us to produce the fruit, operate in the gifts. And part of that gift is that he's giving you the knowledge to understand this word and to read it. And he's giving you the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. Who's your guide? and your counselor, and if you sit down and you say, Lord, teach me this, I promise you he'll teach it to you. But if we're not hungry for this book, we'll never want to sow it to somebody else. Maybe through the course of 2020, maybe through the course of this year. By the way, it's the last Sunday of June. It's almost around Christmas time. Yay, I get a present. People are still talking about 2020. Because 2020 has such an impact on people, on the church, on society, on, on the workforce. People lost their jobs. People lost income. People lost homes. People lost a lot. People lost, people lost their sanity. We need a revival of sanity in the church. Because I'm going to tell you something.
That's a female. She has the body parts to prove it. Amen. That's a male. Amen. And there's nothing, nothing he can do to ever change it. Not that he ever would. I don't care how many surgeries, how many pills. If you're a male or you're a female, there's something in your body called DNA that will never ever be changed by anybody because God put it there and man can't touch it. But there's a group that will tell you. As a matter of fact, our precious mayor in Atlanta, Georgia just opened up 100 bathrooms in the airport to be neutral gender bathrooms. Walk in on my wife, sir, and see what happens. Yeah, uh huh. I'm going to lose Jesus for about 10 minutes, and then when I'm done with you, I'll find him. No, I mean, it, I'm, I'm being funny with that part, but that's where we are. That's how our, we've lost our, our minds. You're born a female, you stay a female. You're born a male. The Bible says who created him, he created her. Adam and Eve, folks, man and woman. The Bible says what makes a marriage is a man leaves his mother and father, clings to his wife, and they become one. Marriage was instituted by God to replenish the earth, to bring forth children. Same-sex couples can't do that. Take that, people. Amen. I'm not trying to be critical. I'm trying to tell you this word has got to get out to people, church. We got to be sowers again of the word of God. We got to look at what Jesus said. We got to be sowers. Doesn't matter if it falls to somebody that's not going to receive it. It doesn't matter. I keep sowing, I keep watering, I keep planting. God's going to cultivate, and he is going to bring the harvest. You guys can be seated. Listen, church. Thank you, sir. Listen. It's time. It's time that we as a church, take this and live by it. Amen. I understand there's a constitution, I understand there's laws, but I understand none of them, none of them outweigh this. Amen. When I stand before him, he's not going to look at the constitution. He's not going to look at the laws of the land. He's going to look at thus saith the Lord, and that's how I'm going to be judged. Amen. Not by anything man has done, by everything God has done. If God has called me to sow seed, and I've rejected to sow it, I might say it, I'll be lost, but I'll pay a price. Because listen, if we refuse to sow seed, there's blood on our hands that we don't even know it belongs to. I know it's a simple parable. It seems so simple. It's just a guy throwing seed on the ground, man. It's just, it's just. But when he come over here and said the seed is the word of God, it changed the whole perspective of the parable. It changed the whole meaning of the parable. You know, these people that were sitting up here, I, and I only used them just so you could understand that in the time of the course of somebody, we never know what our place is and what our part is in their life being cultivated. God's working on the inside. We can't see what's going on. We can't acknowledge what's taking place. We got to quit getting arrogant and prideful. And because I didn't win them to Jesus... They really ain't saved. 
They have to get saved in my church. Baloney. If you start getting that way, Pastor, you need to step down and resign and go do something else for a living. It ain't about this church. It's about his. It may be people that we sow seed to that never walk through those doors. But does it matter? Does it really matter? The seed that is sown, that cultivates and turns into a harvest is a seed that will be recognized when they get to heaven that somebody obeyed what God wanted. And out of your obedience, a life was touched and changed forever. You want to sow seed? Let me tell you something. I've never... I did not walk to school both ways uphill like my dad did. In the snow, in the rain. I, I, didn't, I didn't work in the fields. I didn't work. I didn't have to do all that. I didn't, my parents wasn't that way. We didn't have that. You know, some of you have. Some of you worked hard. Some of you uh, have done some hard, hard work. And, and, and some of you were forced to have to do it. I've talked to many, many people. I've talked to many men and said, yeah, I had to quit school in sixth grade and go to work for my family to support my family because my father passed away. You know, I've, I've heard it. I've heard, I've heard people that, farmers, I've heard of young men, I think boys tell, telling stories, or men telling stories when they would get up at four in the morning and go work the fields, go in, take a shower, eat, go to school, come home and work till the sun went down. Seven days a week, well, after church. They always went to church. <laughs> Wasn't that something? I've heard it. I don't understand that process. But all I know is that it costs something to be a farmer. It costs something to have a garden. It, it costs something to... to to have fruit trees. It costs something. If you're a person that just wants all these fancy, beautiful flowers, it costs something to get them. Right? It costs something. It's going to cost us to sow this word. And if we're not willing to pay it, we'll never be the sower that he's called us to be. Would you stand with me this morning? If you guys could find something that's kind of worshipful, not real upbeat, not real, you know, just something. You can do nothing else if you want to. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Um, just something that, put it low. Uh, I, I, I say this a lot, and, and, I, and I mean it when I say it, but I think every message ever preached is important. And I think every message is real. The one I preached the other week on division and deception is probably one of the most urgent ones I think I've ever preached. But I think this message today is the most needful. Why don't you say that, Pastor? Because I, be, I, I we, we, let me just say it in layman's terms. The buck stops here, folks. If we don't, who will? If we, if he can't use us, he'll use somebody. Understand this. God has a remnant. He has people he can use. He wants to use us. He wants to use you. So we're going to do something real quick. Every, every, every Sunday, I ask the Lord, so how do you want me to close? I always close with salvation. I always have to give that opportunity. But after that, I said, how do you want me to close? What is it you want? What is it you want from your people? Or what do you want to do with your people today? 
Because listen, I, I could pray a prayer and send you home. But I feel like if I did that, I'd be robbing you of something that God wants to do in your heart. So first of all, I'm going to ask over this room. It doesn't matter. You don't have to bow your heads. You don't have to close your eyes. I'm going to ask over this room. Is anybody here today and say, Pastor, my heart's really not right. My heart's really not right. My heart's not right. Maybe you've never been saved. Maybe you have been saved. Maybe it's iffy, questionable. If you're in that, anywhere in that category, I want you to come with your seat and join me right here. I don't want you to raise your hand. Uh, listen, you don't need to be ashamed in this house. There's nothing to be ashamed about. Your shame left, left at the door. Okay? There's nothing, no judgmental spirit in this house. That was left, that's left, that's gone. That's been dead, crucified. Nobody, nobody's here to look at nobody and question anybody. It's a serious moment right now about hearts being cultivated. Just for a moment, anybody. Okay? Every heart's pure, every heart's clear. Now I want to ask you this as a church, and I do not want response to please the pastor. And I'm not trying to be critical this morning. I want you to understand the seriousness of what I'm saying. I don't want pastor pleasing people today. But if I don't go, he's going to look at me. Nope. I'm not even going to look up. I'm just going to look down at the floor. If you're ready to be a sower, and I mean a real sower, would you join me right on these altars for the next few moments? Whoever you are, if you're ready to be a sower, I mean, unlike you've ever been. Maybe some of you are sowers right now, and you sow, you sow powerfully. If that's you, great. I'm not looking, church. I'm not looking. I don't want to know. Because it's not about what I know. What a song. I just want you. Nothing else would do. Nothing else. Nothing else would do. I just want you. I just want you. Oh. Would you just start to pray in your own way right now? You pray how you want to pray. You just pray and how you want to pray. I'm going to de declare something over your life when we leave, before we leave. But I just want you to pray as you feel you need to pray. You say, tell the, say the words to him that you want to say to him. You say the words to him that you want to say. You tell him what you're on your heart right now. You let him know what's on your heart right now. Not, not what I'm going to say. I'm going to pray something over you to leave you with. But I, no, you, you tell him. You tell him this morning. You tell him, Father, whatever it takes, I want to sow your word. I want to sow the seed of your word across the board. I want to sow the seed. And Lord, for those that, are, that, those that sow seed or are finding it, God, we thank you for them. But God, if you want to use me to water it, if you want to, it's not about anything else, God. I just want to sow. I want to be a part of the process. God, that I can speak into a life that somebody has sown into. And that water from your spirit will penetrate that seed and bring life to that person. God, that's the only seed that doesn't have to die to produce. It produces when it's sown. Father, thank you. Help me. Help me be a sower. Help me be a sower. Help me be a sower. Lord, I thank you this morning. I thank you this morning. I thank you this morning. And Father, I'm going to pray over these, over these folks that are here today. And I declare over these people, God, that they'll be fertile soil in their path. That you'll put fertile soil in their pathway, God. As they, as they sow the seed of the Word of God, God, I'm, I'm praying that as they water seed that has been sown, God, that you use them mightily, powerfully, Lord, you use them to, to cultivated hearts that are receiving the word that is being spoken out of their mouth, God. I'm, I'm praying, God, over them that, that you expand their territory, God. That you bless them coming in and going out. 
God, that you use them in these last times that we're in, these last days that we're in. God, use them in a mighty way to build the kingdom of God. And Lord, let our focus, let our minds, and I'm praying this over us all, get away from the harvest. We know the harvest is coming, but it's your harvest, not ours. It's your harvest, not ours. Now, Father, help us. Help us. Help us. Get the word in us so we can get the word through us. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, we give you all honor. And we thank you, Lord, for our Facebook family. Those that are watching, you're part of this. You're, just, you're, you're a seed sower for the kingdom of God. We're going to sow some seeds for your harvest, for the kingdom harvest. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. And we give you honor. And would you give the, the Lord the best praise you can as we say we're dismissed. <laughs> leadership team, leadership team, board members and your wives, if you'll stay and hang around with us, we got a meeting in a fellowship hall. Tommy's going to go pick up lunch. Lunch is going to be provided for you. Um, I did not get Crystal, so you'll know. Uh, but we want you to stay. We're not going to keep the meeting long. So there's some that's going to be that road with others. So um, if y'all want to go look at the zoo, we got deers in our back parking lot. Uh, God bless you. Be a seed sower in Jesus' name. Yep, the mama's there now. <laughs>